Joining me now is a woman whose philanthropy attempts to change the way we look at aid in Africa. Grace Hightower De Niro launched Grace Hightower and Coffees of Rwanda with the stated intent of supporting the Rwandan people to market their products on a global scale. Grace joins me now from New York. What inspired you to start Grace Hightower and Coffees of Rwanda? Well, Larry, um, I heard the president of Rwanda, Paul, President Kagame, Paul Kagame, speak at an event uh, a few years ago. And he struck a chord when he mentioned that he had a vision for his people and country of trade and not just aid. So I had never heard any uh, head of state speak that way, uh, coming from a, what you call, I guess, a third world country. And it impressed me so that I really wanted to get to know more about what Rwanda uh, was and, and the people, and especially after the atrocities that happened during the genocide, I thought this was just something so impressive, and it inspired me. So give me the gist of what Grace Hightower and Coffees of Rwanda is and does. Well, it is a company that sources, co sources high-quality coffee out of Rwanda directly from the small farmers. And what I mean by that is there is not, there's not a middleman. We source directly from the cooperatives who own the washing stations, which is where the small farmers bring in the cherries that they've picked, then they are weighed and at that point in time, they either receive direct payment if they want it at that time, or if they would like to have a credit, they cannot receive the payment right then and there and, and hold it over for a later time in the year because there's only one harvest, and uh, this money has to carry the farmers through for an entire year, if not longer. We'll continue the conversation with Grace Hightower De Niro after the break. What were they doing before this? Before coffee? Yeah. Well, coffee is one of the resources, main resources there. There's also tea. Uh, they also grow pineapples. They have, uh, they weave baskets. There's uh, a particular flower there that they use for um, pest repellent uh, or uh, insect repellent, that they press the oils out of the flower. They have quite a few resources. Coffee happens to be one of the main uh, cash crop resources. Is it a good coffee? It's a great coffee, Larry. So you're getting these people to not, you're not teaching them, you're not giving them a fish, you're teaching them how to fish. You got it, absolutely. Because you know, you can, you, you know, the, the key is to leave people with their integrity and to uh, allow them to create what they have the potential to create. And you know, what I found, I'm a coffee drinker too, but when I went to Rwanda and cup the coffee, it was absolutely incredible. And you will, you will see that as well when you taste it. How has this project affected the lives and the morale of the people there? I think uh, on, a, on a very positive base, it has affected them positively. Um, there are more women involved in the business side of the coffee uh, business now. And as women have become involved, as you know, Larry, uh, we tend to make things happen. Yes. Uh, so the, um, the families have become stronger. The communities thus have become stronger. And you see more um, schools and, and health care becoming more stronger. So it has been a real positive effect. It's having a positive effect. Is there still a threat of genocide from the Congo and the rebels? I, I think that um, I don't know. I can't answer that question. I certainly hope not. But, you know, possibilities are always there, unfortunately. The argument was that the West stood by during that genocide and that the atrocities still continue. Have you, did you see any when you were over there? Well, when I was in Rwanda, I did not see any atrocities uh, while I was there. I went to the museum and I saw what had taken place. Uh, what I found when I went to visit the farms and the farmers, 
I saw people working diligently. I saw people with tenacity, with determination to move forward with their lives. Um, I certainly, if I had seen atrocity, I certainly wouldn't be involved in any kind of uh, dealings like that, any kind of business. Do you think initiatives like yours and fair trade create uh, stability might do it in other nations in Africa? Oh, gosh, I, I certainly do believe that. I, I think that fair trade and uh, really starting with the small farmers, these are the grassroots people, and um, helping to create a sustainable environment there and a sustainable income and business certainly supports the structure of the sustainability of the country, yes. We see what's happening with Boko Haram in Africa. That's terrible, the kidnapping of women and girls. Yes. One would only hope that this comes to an end soon. Absolutely. Absolutely, Larry. I certainly do hope that people can find compassion and know that all of this energy that they're spending on terrorizing and brutalizing can be used in another, can be used to some good. Um, one of the other things that I would hope and that people will realize who are committing these terrible acts is that, you know, you are committing these violent acts against women and you came from a woman and you have sisters and siblings and, and uh, mother and aunts. And so there needs to be more compassion. It's insane. It is. Yeah. It's insane. What can people do now who want to help your efforts? Well, they can certainly buy more of the coffee. That's number one. Where do you buy it? Anywhere, any grocery stores? Where do they sell it? Absolutely. We sell it on our website. Oh, good. We, yes, we sell it at Gracefully. Uh, we sell it at Agatha and, and uh, Valentina. Um, we are... What's at the website? It's a coffeeofgrace.com. Coffee of Grace. www. Co I'm sorry. <laughs> coffeeofgrace.com. Dot com. And the secret. So you don't have to contribute. To buy the coffee keeps increasing the volume of money to go to Rwanda. Absolutely. And it also, it keep, that's absolutely true. And it also helps to keep the farmers to constantly and steadily improve the quality of the coffee. So the product is getting better. It's already great, but to buy the coffee, you increase all around. You increase the money that goes to Rwanda and you increase, you increase the farmers to provide you with a better product. What does your husband, Robert De Niro, or my friend Robert, think of all your efforts in doing this? Because he's a very private person. Uh, he's very private. He actually traveled to Rwanda with me, and he is full-on supportive of what I'm doing. Um, and he loves the coffee. <laughs> you get a lot of rewards out of this, Grace, personal? I do. I really do. I do. You know, Larry, I like, I really am getting great rewards from this because it's, um, it's, it's, as you said earlier, it's, it's not giving a person a fish, it's teaching them how to fish. I love the fact when I first arrived in Rwanda and started to meet all the people, th there's something there that's really beautiful, and it's that they have the potential and want to create. They don't want to have a handout. They want to create and do. And you see that beauty in the people when you're there. And so it's, it's, a, it's, it's very, it's a wonderful contagiousness. Grace, you're a wonderful lady. I salute all you're doing and thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you, Larry. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. For more information on Grace's work, check out coffeeofgrace.com.